So, don't get any ideas in your little rodent pea brains. I'm not back, back, I'm not back to doing Hoagly beer reviews. So, don't get that in your head. Not happening. Um, think of this in a pro wrestling context. Once in a while, they retire, but then they come back for one or two shots. We're not talking Terry Funk here, who retires like every year and then comes back. We're talking like a McFoley or Kevin Nash or someone along those lines who kind of retire and then come back and do one or two shots because there's money there. <laughs> there's no money here, though, of course. Uh, but what we're doing is something special, and so fuck it, I decided to make a video. So what we're going to be looking at, and I'm not necessarily doing a review here, this is going to be sort of a uh, continuation of a series I did a long time ago with the Chimay Blue, where I was aging different vintages of uh, a vintage of Chimay Blue for different years. And we're going to be doing that with Fuller's 2017 Vintage Ale. So I have three of these. One we're going to be drinking tonight. And two of them we're going to be sitting on. I'm going to come back in... Hmm. I haven't quite decided. I'm trying to decide right off the cuff right now. I'm going to say two and a half years for the next bottle. Then I'm going to say five years for the last bottle. I can't make a five year then ten year commitment. I just can't do it. Uh, I can't be uh, 50 years old and waiting on a fucking Fuller's Vintage Jail. Even though it might be hella worth it. Could be, who knows, but I'm not going to do it. Who knows if I'll even live that fucking long. So, uh, why uh, take chances like that? So we got Fuller's Vintage Ale 2017, bottle conditioned, vintage ale at 8.5% alcohol by volume. It's got the spiel on the back. It's got the handy little booklet that tells you about all the different vintages that have uh, come previous to this. The 20 previous vintages. Yeah, good stuff. They got a new um, brewer doing this one. Uh... I should have looked this up online because I cannot, I cannot make out her name. Her script is uh, unreadable to me. Oh, maybe they put it here. Mm, no, they don't. Anyway, as the new head brewer, this 2017 edition of Vintage Ale Champions, the new American hop variety, Denali. Now I have a thing here on Denali, so we'll quickly look at this. Nice little breakdown of this. It's an experimental variety of hops. Um, it's called Nuggetzilla, apparently, is a nickname. It's uh, rich in pineapple, citrus, and pine flavors, although it can often come off as just really spicy, apparently. It can be used for bittering flavor or aroma. And, yeah, there you go. Uh, genetic origin of this is 50% Nugget, 25% Zeus, 25% USDA. 19058M, whatever the fuck that is. And uh, we don't need to know this shit. But high in alpha acids. So there you go. American up the yin yang. So they got the Denali here. And they say they marriaged that with a new version of uh, British barley that just became available, which is the Laureate Barley. Uh, the only characteristic I saw on the Laureate Barley is that it produces an extremely high yield, so you're getting a lot of uh, barley out of the crops. Uh, apparently highly resistant to disease, grows very well. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's anything particularly great about it, other than it, you know, just being your standard kind of brewing barley. It's just more more betterer against fighting diseases. So there you go. And so boo, 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 boo. again they say we'll improve like fine wine or whiskey. Whiskey does not improve in the bottle. It improves in the barrels. 
and they say enjoy before December 2027. So, yeah, um, I'll be enjoying this a lot sooner than that. And there you go. Product of England, brewed and bottled by Fuller, Smith & Turner, PLC, Cheswick Lane, South London. The Griffin Brewery, I seem to recall. Yep, yeah, the Griffin Brewery. So there you go. 500 milliliter bottle. Let's look at the bottle. So they got these new sexy bottles that they've had for a couple years now. Uh, the last vintage I had of this was the 2015, I believe it was, and I was not impressed with it. Now, some people are going to poo-poo me and say, well, Lee, you didn't age that one. I've had enough drinking and experience with vintages and how a beer is under my belt to sort of guess what that 2015 vintage was going to turn out to be and I kind of figured it was just going to turn out to be shit there there was nothing to it it was standard British bitter with more alcohol was my opinion anyway if, if, if I'm proven wrong I'll be happy to admit I'm fucking wrong on that one because the fresh bottle I had of that was exactly that and it didn't feel like there was much room for improvement from aging it we'll see if this is different uh, this is number 19,545, numbered bottle. Break this bad boy open. We've been doing it 20 years. Ooh, a little active there. A little bit of bubbly. Got my big nonic for this shit. I mean, at this point, it's just uh, supposed to be like basically a strong bitter, kind of barley wine kind of thing, but nothing too particularly advanced or robust. You know, it, it, it's made as something that's supposed to get better with age in the bottle, and so I feel pretty comfortable putting it in this glass instead of, say, like a snifter or tulip glass or anything like that. So there you go, looking at that fucker. So she's approaching sort of ruby red mahogany kind of color. Lots of bubbles coming up. Pretty nice head for 8.5%. I shouldn't be surprised by that any that sort of thing anymore. Seems like big beers now, just as a standard for years now, have still ha sort of yielded pretty impressive heads. Like, So there you go. But yeah, it's a very tight head. Very nice looking off-white so we'll go to right to the aroma here and the other hops we have by the way I, th I think I forgot to mention that in the reading here oh yeah they use uh, Goldings of course and Target Goldings of course is going to bring you more of that sort of earthiness for the most part um, Target let me just re-familiarize myself it's citrusy and spicy so and it's kind of like a even here they say a flexible hop um, so basically what they're saying here is this is sort of one that you use as a sort of a solid foundation for your new awesome hop to sit upon and it just sort of boosts it up a little bit you know uh, gives it a little bit more depth and I think that's kind of what they're going for here so we'll just uh, swirl it a little bit here first I'm a little out of practice doing this shit Mm. so yeah a lot of that earthiness from the goldings a little bit of floral kind of character comes out um, definitely getting this Denali hop like what they say with the pineapple kind of citrusy quality you're definitely getting a little bit of that there there's kind of a pineapple sweetness In mixing with the target and the golding, it's very, um, very floral, nice sweetness. The sweetness is not 
uh, cloying at all. It's not sickly sweet or anything like that. And it's got a little bit of that earthy base from the from the Goldings as well. It smells like a standard British bitter that has a little bit of something else going on, basically. And I'm not getting any of the alcohol at all on this, so. It smells really good. We'll go right to the taste. Cheers. Hmm. This is good. It's, um, I'm getting a little bit of alcohol stringency in the back. Um, getting a teeny bit of the Goldings here. Uh, you, you got that earthiness in the background. For the most part, uh, I'm getting nice clean malt taste. I'm getting that sort of accented and highlighted by the Denali, I assume because I'm getting more of that sort of pineapple kind of thing going on. Um, very citrusy. Uh, it's definitely overtaking the Goldings quite a bit. So you're not getting your sort of traditional British sort of bitter uh, finish. You're getting a much more uh, slightly American take on that sort of thing. Well, I shouldn't say American take because it's not an American brewery doing it. I'd say American injection into it. Um, insertion. An American insertion into it. Yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. And yeah, there's not a lot else going on. Um, so it's... I find it funny that they mention that, oh, we got this new Denali hop here. And this is one of these big alpha acid motherfuckers um, that's supposed to be super flavorful. And I'm definitely getting a lot of flavor from it. But you're supposed to age this for upwards of 5 to 10 years. That's going to be gone. So I'm kind of want. I'm, I'm very excited, actually. Not excited. I'm intrigued. Intrigued is probably the word to see where this fucking beer goes because as it stands right now if I was going to give it like a mark on my rating scale at a five it's probably sitting at like a three because it's just kind of a really good beer that is high in alcohol and sort of masks the alcohol fairly well like you get a little bit of it there um, the body is not as thick as I would have hoped it would be oh excuse me it's not as thick as I would have hoped it would be. Um, especially since it's like a vintage ale and you're trying to sit on it. Like, I, I'm assuming this is going to be fucking ultra thin in five years. Creamy, maybe. But we'll see. But yeah, that hops is good. That hops, um... It's not super exciting, but it's good. It's an interesting infusion of uh, American and English here. But, yeah, as it stands right now, it's like a 3 out of 5. So, I guess it's going to be two and a half years from now. So, that would be... Uh, what what month would that be? I guess June of 2019. No. We'll see. My brain's not working well tonight. I th I'm 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 thinking it's June of 2019. But uh, we'll. We'll, we'll recalculate that shit. Like I said, I'm rusty at this. I haven't done this as a actual beer reviewer in quite a while, so fuck all you guys for uh, laughing at me, making fun of me. It's not very nice. Now I have to try to pace myself and just sip on this bitch. 
because it is 8.5% alcohol by volume. And I've been reducing my drinking now for a couple months. And I've become a full-on teetotaler again almost, in my constitution at least, uh, where these big beers are just knocking me the fuck out, where beforehand I could just go through like four Fuller's Vintage Jails in a night and feel fine. But now, now this, this, could put, this could put me to bed. I become that much of a puss uh, when it comes to beer anyway. But uh, yeah, there you go. So Fuller's Vintage Jail. Bitches, 2017, we'll see you in two and a half years to see how this has changed, if any. And then after that, another uh, two and a half years. We'll get to five years, and we'll really see what, what's up. If YouTube's still around, I don't know what fucking... I don't know what fucking format this will be on. Maybe it'll be on Vidme, or um, maybe I'll become a secret millionaire. Uh, and, uh, develop my own web site thing. Who knows, with this net neutrality shit going down, pretty soon we might not have a voice at all on the internet. We might all be fucking drones who just connect to the internet and get information blasted into our fucking brains that whoever's controlling the internet wants us to see. It's not that much different as things go now, but at least you have freedom of movement for the most part. You might not have that next year, so who knows? This might be a preemptive kind of thing, you know, like... Uh, or presumption here of, of me, uh, presumptuous that uh, I'm going to have two and a half years, let alone <laughs> five years, to fucking finish this series. We might all not be talking to each other anymore very, very soon. Hey, who knows? I mean, I know it's only in the U.S. right now, but uh, that shit tends to spread. Like it or not, the U.S. does influence the rest of the world in often very negative ways. So, we'll see. At the very least, people in the U.S. watching might never see these. So, <laughs> sorry guys. I might as well just have stayed retired. Bye, bitches.